What's going on guys, Ben here, and today on Player.net we're taking a look at the A602 DIY 3D printer from our friends over at Have It. Now as you can see it features a nice acrylic frame, it has an LED display up here with the knobs where you can go ahead and change some settings on it and do um, some manual configurations. It has a nice wide printing base here that allows it to print almost up to an 8 by 8 by 7 inch area and it is also backed by a one year warranty. With that being said, let's not waste any time, let's have a closer look. <laughs> All right, so as mentioned, it features a nice LED screen that also offers a lot of options. Now you can go ahead and manually adjust the settings of the extruder and the base plate and all that fun stuff through there if need be. And it also offers a few more settings. I won't go through them all because it's just too much. You're better off having a look at it. Now, of course, the LED screen is controlled by the knob to the right of it which is all housed in the acrylic structure. Now, it also works via an SD card, so there is absolutely no need to have a laptop or a computer hooked up to this if you don't want to. Now, of course, uh, it'll be a, take a little bit of getting used to using the SD card, but once you've done it, it should be simple enough, and you can find all the instructions in with the installation guide on how to do that. One of the good features I found is that it supports ABS and PLA filament. Now, as far as I am aware, these are currently the two most commonly used filaments uh, for 3D printing, and they do have a few different um, features to them about how they handle moisture and some things like that. Now we can move on to the extruder head, which is just there on the right-hand side. It features two fans and a heat sink to keep everything at the right temperature needed as you don't want it too hot or too cold so those can also be configured in the program that you will use to go ahead and print. You can manually set it up or you'll put it in the files. Like I said, it's a, hot, it's a lot to explain. You have to look at the program to fully understand what I'm talking about. The printing size for the A602 is 200 by 200 by 180 millimeters and it also features a layer thickness of 0.1 to 0.4 millimeters. Now that's quite small if you ask me. It should be good. Like I said, I'm looking forward to getting this thing up and testing it. The extruder diameter itself is 0.4 millimeters and it has a temperature of up to 270 degrees. And the hotbed has a temperature of up to 110. So as you can see, this should definitely be good for most hobbyists or even mild enthusiasts in craft work and whatnot. It surely isn't meant for industrial sized jobs, but it's definitely a good way to get your foot in the door and start playing with it. Start getting yourself into the world of 3D printing and whatnot. Moving around the A602, we'll first take a look at the side that features the PCB. Now, first off, don't worry if your A602, once it's all built, does not look exactly like this. Of course, as mentioned, it is a DIY unit, so the end result is going to change, especially the wiring. Some of us, well, I shouldn't say some of us, some people will do a better job, some people will do a minimal job, but it's to each his own. But the big thing is keeping the wires out of the way of all the moving parts. Now, as mentioned, I know it's very hard to see, but there is actually a PCB board somewhere behind all those wires. Now this is going to be where you connect most of the components um, so they can go ahead and be controlled and monitored and regulated. Now as I said, this is, um, it will take a little bit of wiring. Um, there are a few wires on this side you'll have to manually wire. It's not just all plug and play. You'll have to crimp some ends and plug some stuff in, but it's not very hard. Uh, most people can do it. I just recommend that you go ahead and take your time. Moving across to the other side of the A602, and if everything was said and done right, this should be where your power supply is. Now, there is one thing to mention here. The two long back pieces on the back that kind of stand up, 
they are different. So if you've installed them wrong, you may see your power supply and PCB board may not fit on the outsides of the 3D printer. They might want to go on the inside. If that is the case, fear not, because you can actually just remove the two big black uh, acrylic pieces that they're connected to and swap them. You don't have to disassemble the whole printer. You can take the four screws out of each piece and then just swap them easily. So fear not. But as mentioned, this is the side with the power supply. Again, you will need to crimp some wires and put them in there, get your little screwdriver out and make sure you've wired them up correctly. Uh, the full diagram should be found in the instructions on how to do this. So here's the back of the A602 DIY printer. As we can see, there are some wires back here, so we need to be careful when configuring everything. Speaking of configuring, when everything, when you have the actual printer built and you're going to wire things up, you need to be careful because a lot of these parts do move. So you need to make sure you haven't zip tied uh, the wires where they won't be able to reach the furthest destination. So what I recommend doing is as you're setting it up and wiring it, go ahead, move the things around a little bit. I mean, things such as the hotbed, you can go ahead and move it yourself. You can, once the, when the machine's not on, you can push it a little bit and it will move. Don't be afraid of it. Um, the same thing with the extruder head. If you need to move it left to right, you can go ahead and gently push it left to right and it will move without being connected to anything. You can manually move it to get it in its furthest away position. So in that way, you can go ahead and zip tie your wires knowing that they will be able to reach the furthest destination and they won't cause any conflicts or get in the way or get cut short and unplug themselves or cause any problems like that. Aside from that, there's not a whole lot going on on the back. We of course have the input for our mains plug and then there's also an on and off switch to control the A602 DIY printer. And that is pretty much it for the back. So that is it for our short overview on the A602 DIY printer that was sent to us from our good friends over at Havit. Uh, I plan on getting to use this bad boy. There will hopefully be some more time lapse videos, some more um, files and whatnot so maybe you guys can recreate some of the things I've printed if you want to go ahead and test it out and I plan on just getting um, a bit better feeling for the machine and using it more uh, of course if anything comes up I think that you guys should be aware of I'll make a video or uh, post it on player.net do a little written uh, article on it if need be and yeah uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. Please stay tuned for more content from the 3D printer and just from player in general. We've got a lot of big things coming up, so make sure you guys check back regularly. Thank you.